ever wish money came with like a user manual, you know? Right. I mean, we use it every day, but yeah. how much do we really understand about our like relationship with it? Mm-hmm. Today's deep dive is all about getting happy with our finances. Okay. And I have to admit, when I first heard the title Happy Money, I was I was a bit skeptical. It does sound a bit whimsical, doesn't it? Yeah. But trust me, Ken Honda's approach in this book is anything but superficial. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You've piqued my interest. What I found intriguing was how Honda's like journey into this unique perspective on finances began. He wasn't some struggling artist seeking wealth. He was already a successful businessman. Mm-hmm. He'd actually retired young to focus on family, Ugh. and yet something was missing. Yeah, he talks about this aha moment he had on a playground watching his young daughter, and um, it made him realize that our financial realities are just so deeply intertwined with our emotions, yeah. something we often just completely overlook. Yeah, so we compartmentalize, right? Total. Money is for spreadsheets and budgets, not for, like, feelings. <laughs> yeah. But but we all know those feelings are there. Oh, yeah. Lurking beneath the surface, influencing our decisions. Precisely. And Honda argues that until we address those underlying emotions, those, he calls them deep-seated beliefs, mm. we're only addressing, like, half the equation. Yeah. It's like trying to bake a cake with only half the ingredients. Okay, that's a that's a pretty great analogy. So yeah. how do we start gathering those missing ingredients? Well, it starts with recognizing that money at its core is yeah. energy. And like any form of energy, it can be positive or negative, flowing freely or becoming stagnant. Think about how differently you react to real money versus, say, those Monopoly bills. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Playing Monopoly, I'm practically throwing money around, right. taking risks, having fun. Exactly. But with real money, yeah, there's this weight, this fear. Even the word finances sounds intimidating. Exactly. It's that emotional baggage that Honda encourages us to kind of unpack. He introduces this concept of smiling money, okay. suggesting that money can carry an energy of joy, abundance, and gratitude. Smiling money, huh? I have to admit, I've never thought of my money that way. Yeah. But it's it's an interesting image. How do we go from those negative associations to seeing our money as something positive, something that brings a smile to our faces? Yeah. It begins with understanding, like, the why behind our desire for money. Okay. You know? Honda outlines six common reasons people want money. Mm. And they often reveal a lot about, like, our underlying motivations mm. and our and our fears, you know? Okay, let's let's dive into those six reasons. Yeah. What's what's the first one? Is it just the obvious one? Like, like we needed to survive. Yeah, you're right. That's that's like the foundation right. having enough for basic necessities, yeah. you know, that sense of security. But often, like, it goes deeper than just meeting our needs. Okay. Honda suggests this desire can stem from a fear of scarcity, okay, a yeah. belief that there's just, like, never enough to go around. That that makes sense. Yeah. Especially if you grew up with, like, financial instability. That that fear of ending up back in that, that precarious position could be a powerful motivator. Exactly. And that leads us to, like... The second reason, oh. the desire for freedom and choice, huh. money as a means to pursue passions, yeah. travel, create the life we envision. Yeah, that definitely resonates with me. Yeah. Having that financial flexibility to make choices aligned with your values. Right. That's that's a powerful motivator. It is. But I can see how it can easily tip into that like keeping up with the Joneses mentality. Precisely. And that desire for status and recognition kind of ties into the third reason Honda highlights. Okay. Using money to gain social standing. Okay. Or even to to get back at others. Oh, that's that's interesting. It's like yeah. money becomes a tool for validation. Right. Even if it's coming from a place of insecurity. It's sad. He gives that example in the book, right, about people overspending to impress or even get revenge on like some imagined bully from their past. You've you've hit the nail on the head. It's a it's a fascinating example of how our past experiences can actually influence our financial behavior yeah. in the present. Right. Yeah. And speaking of past experiences, reason number 4 revolves around the need for security and stability. Okay, so kind of going back to that. Yeah, exactly. Like, like a deeper level, I think. For the roller coaster of the past few years. I think a lot of people are, are craving stability right now. Oh, absolutely. That financial cushion can really feel like a, a safety net in, in uncertain times. Absolutely. But like any of these motivations, it can become problematic if if taken to, to the extreme. Right. The line between seeking security and like 
hoarding out of fear can get can get blurry. Oh yeah. Um, the fifth reason Honda outlines might surprise some people. Oh, yeah. The desire to use money to gain love and attention. Oh, that's that's a tricky one. It is. It's it's the age old idea that money can buy happiness, or in this case, love. Right. But we all know deep down that genuine connection isn't something you could just purchase. You're you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's it's a it's a recipe for disappointment yeah. because it's seeking external validation right. rather than cultivating true self worth. Mm. And finally, the sixth reason: okay. wanting money to express love and appreciation. Okay, that one seems like it, it should be a purely positive motivation. Yeah. Wanting to use your resources to help others, to be generous, to to show you care. It is, inherently. Yeah. But Honda cautions against using money as a substitute for for genuine emotional connection. Oh, okay. Right? True generosity comes from a place of abundance. Right. Not obligation or a need to impress. That's a, that's a great point. It's like... Those extravagant gifts that miss the mark I will like, because they lack that that personal touch, yeah. that genuine sentiment. Yeah. So we've got these these six reasons, mm -hmm. but how do they tie back to this concept of smiling money, right? And cultivating a more positive relationship with finances. Here's where it gets interesting. Okay. Honda argues that many of these motivations, particularly right. the ones rooted in like fear or insecurity, right, are fueled by what he calls the myth of scarcity. This is that deep-seated belief that there's there's never enough to go around, yeah. which keeps us trapped in a cycle of comparison, competition, okay. and dissatisfaction. It's that it's that keeping up with the Joneses on a on a deeper level. Is exactly. Always striving for more. Yes. Never quite feeling content with with what we have. Exactly. And to break free from that cycle, yeah, we need to address those those underlying beliefs. Okay. And start cultivating a mindset of abundance. So how do we? How do we do that? How do we go from feeling like there's never enough right. to seeing the world yeah. and, and our finances through a, a lens of abundance? Tell me more about that. Yeah. Okay. So we need to we need to dismantle this like myth of scarcity. Yeah. But like, where do we even begin? It feels like this like deeply ingrained belief system. Huh? It is, and it often starts, you know, in yeah. childhood. Cool. Honda talks about the influence of our families, mm -hmm. the unspoken money messages we absorb growing up, which he calls our, like, money history. Right. Like, if your parents were constantly stressed about money, yeah. you might you might internalize that anxiety even if you've never experienced financial hardship yourself. Exactly. Or the, or the flip side. Right. Growing up with abundance, but also a sense of guilt or a fear of losing it. Yeah. yeah. These these early experiences shape our what he calls like our money personalities. Yeah. Are we savers, spenders, worriers, mm -hmm. avoiders? Those money personalities. Yeah. He describes them almost like archetypes, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. curious. Yeah. What would you say is the most like common money personality you've encountered? That's a great question. It's it's tough to pinpoint one yeah. because they they often manifest in such unique ways. Right. But um, one that comes up frequently is the like the worrier, okay. the constantly anxious about money, no matter you know how much they have. I know that type. Always, always expecting the other shoe to drop. Yeah. Exactly. So how do we break free from these like these ingrained patterns, uh, especially if they stem from experiences we might not even be like consciously aware of? Awareness is is like the crucial first step. Okay. You know, Honda emphasizes the importance of acknowledging and even forgiving our parents' money baggage. Oh, okay. Not not blaming them, but but recognizing how their own experiences might have shaped their, you know, financial behaviors and yeah. beliefs. Right. Yeah. Which then got passed down to us. It reminds me of that of that story he shares about the man who like inherited his grandfather's generosity wow, yeah. through that incredible act of kindness even after the family fortune was lost. The Sukiyapi set with the surprise check inside. Yes. Yeah. It it beautifully illustrates how happy money can like flow through generations. Yeah. Not not just as material wealth, right. but as a, as a spirit of generosity. Yeah, yeah. And it highlights that even if it, you know if, even if we haven't had the best financial role models, right. we, can, we can choose to to break the cycle and create a new a new legacy. It's a it's a powerful reminder that we have more agency than we realize. Absolutely, we can choose to rewrite those those yeah. old stories and yeah. and create a new narrative around money, mm -hmm. one that's that's rooted in abundance and joy. It's so, wh where do we where do we go from here? Like, how how do we start putting these concepts into practice? 
One of Honda's like most most powerful suggestions is cultivating a a deep sense of gratitude for what we already have. Great. Not just like thinking positive thoughts, but yeah. but truly appreciating the abundance that already exists in our lives. I can I can see how like gratitude could shift our perspective from from scarcity to abundance. Yes. But but what does that look like in a in a practical sense? It could be as simple as like taking a few moments each day okay to appreciate the roof over your head the oh. food on your table the people you love it's right. it's about shifting your focus from what's lacking yeah. to what's what's already present okay and it's and it's not just about material possessions right. gratitude for our health yeah. our relationships our talents hmm. these these all contribute to a sense of abundance it's like that saying, energy flows where attention goes. Yes. If if we're constantly focused on what we what we lack, we're more likely to to attract more lack. Totally. But if we if we focus on gratitude and and uh, appreciation, right, we we open ourselves up to receiving more of those those positive experiences. Exactly. It it creates a ripple effect, and this yeah. ties back to that concept of of money as energy. Right. Honda compares it to the energy of a of a bustling city. Okay. Money is constantly like flowing, yeah. changing hands, creating opportunities. I, I love that analogy. Yeah. It makes me think about those those bustling markets he describes. The the energy is is contagious even if you're even if you're just an observer. Precisely. And like any form of energy, we can we can learn to work with it yeah. to to understand its rhythms and flow. Mm -hmm. We can become more conscious of of where our money is going mm -hmm. and and why are we are we spending it in a way that aligns with our values yeah. and and brings us joy. So it's it's not about like hoarding money, no, or or becoming a Scrooge. Right. It's about becoming more more mindful. Yes. More more intentional about our about our relationship with with finances. Exactly. And that that brings us to like the big picture, yeah. the the future of money. Oh, okay. Honda suggests two potential paths. Okay. One driven by fear, scarcity yeah. and competition. Okay. The other by abundance, collaboration and yeah. innovation. Okay, I'm I'm ready for some some optimism. Okay. Paint me a picture of that that happy money future. In a happy money future, we we embrace technological advancements like like artificial intelligence not not as job skillers but mm. as but as tools to enhance our capabilities yeah. and and create new opportunities yeah. we see a world where where basic needs are met yeah. and and people are free to pursue their passions mm -hmm. contribute their talents and and live you know fulfilling lives that that sounds idyllic but how do we how do we get there from here right Especially with all the the uncertainty and and change happening in the world right now, Honda argues that the the shift it it begins within each of us. Okay, it it starts with questioning those those old limiting beliefs about money and and embracing a a new narrative one one rooted in abundance, gratitude, yeah, and and the understanding that true wealth encompasses so much more than just our our bank accounts mm -hmm. he he leaves us with a with a thought-provoking question inspired by his travels to bhutan okay. one of the happiest countries in the world okay what else do you really need to feel happy it's a it's a question worth worth pondering isn't it yeah because ultimately happiness isn't a a destination we arrive at with enough money in the bank. It's yeah. it's a state of being, a yes. a choice we make each day to to align our actions with our values, mm. to appreciate the the abundance that already surrounds us, yeah. and to to use our resources, both financial and otherwise, absolutely to to create a more joyful and fulfilling life. Yeah, for for ourselves and and for others. Yeah. Beautifully said. And that that wraps up our our deep dive into Ken Honda's happy money. Ah. We we hope you've found it insightful and inspiring. Until next time, keep diving.